Welcome back to the Macro Golf Podcast. Joe and Sam here from Macro Golf. We just wanted to start this episode by letting you know about the Macro Golf app. Now, if you're enjoying all of the content on golf fitness and performance, and you want to start getting into action and actually starting to perform some of these tasks, then the Macro Golf app is where you need to be. Sam's going to let you know everything that the Macro Golf is going to include for you. We have over 150 mobility videos, 20 plus different training programs, 250 exercise library videos, our golf swing speed training plans, tons of different flow routines, our golf fitness journal, plus tons, tons more. If you guys do want to take advantage of this for our podcast listeners, we're going to give our 10% off. So if you go to macrogolfonline.co.uk forward slash app, Click sign up and enter the code PODCAST10. You'll get 10% off there and we hope you like it. Yeah, let's get into today's episode. And welcome back, guys. Welcome back to another episode of the Macro Golf Podcast. I'm joined with Jojo. How are we doing? All good, thank you. All good, all good. Um, Yeah. Been playing a lot of golf, so definitely in uh, you have been playing tons of golf. <laughs> Last round we played you absolutely absolutely done with it. And yeah, I, I played way too much. Yeah, yeah. I think I was on like day <laughs> six of continuously playing. I definitely had enough when we played uh, last, but uh yeah, trying to make the most of it. Um and excited to talk about our topic for today, which is nice timing as the golf season is starting to, to wind down. So this is well, yes, well timed. Really, really exciting topic. Really exciting topic. We thought we'd talk today about goal setting. So how to goal set and also why it is important to set your goals, um, no matter what they are. Uh, something we talk a lot about with clients um, quite early on in the onboarding process. It's, it's really important to kind of set the structure for for where we're actually going otherwise you're just kind of doing all this training changing your lifestyle changing your habits without really realizing what what for Mm -hmm. yeah i think uh what we'll probably try and avoid is you know this is unplanned as it was for us but what we probably will try and avoid is uh the the cliche stuff right we're going to try we're not going to teach you the boring stuff of smart goals and making sure they're specific and measurable and you know they're achievable and stuff now we're going to talk about like the realistic stuff of like how do you actually even go through the process of setting these goals and what potentially could they look like and what process do we go through with our clients when we're looking to goal set uh, and all the, like in all the different ways that that possibly happened as well. I think we've both done it previously where some people prefer really specific things and measurable and some people just want a ge- generic direction that they want to head in, right? And I think both of those are okay yeah. um, depending on what it is you're going to work for. So hopefully we'll cover that in a little bit more of a what more of a wider frame, a little bit more realistic and a little bit more applicable rather than just talking through like the theory of goal setting, which I think everyone's probably bored of by now. Absolutely. Absolutely. But just quickly off the back, Joe, would you say, how important would you say it is out of 10 before starting maybe a new training plan or getting into the season or, or changing anything? How important would you say it is? That how how high do you rank kind of sitting down with your clients and saying, right, this is, this is the next step. This is what we're going for. Yeah, I think... Um... I think it's very important. I think I know we said we're going to talk about goals, but I think what's for me, what I try and put in with my clients is the overarching thing above goals is the vision. So what are we really trying to work towards in general? Like if if it's like, okay, I want to get better at golf, then that's, that's a vision, right? That's not, it's not necessarily a goal. It's more of a vision. I want to be, you know, I want to be a scratch golfer or I want to be someone who breaks 80 more regularly or, I want to be fitter and healthier and, you know, stronger. Their visions really more than they are goals. And I think the vision is, is really important. I think if you don't have a vision, it's very, very tough to have the motivation to do anything. Uh, And I think that the goals then work quite easily off of a vision. So off the back. uh, Yeah. Yeah. So I think how important is a vision? I think 10 out of 10, like the vision is a 10 of importance. Uh, How important are then the goals on top of that? Less important the goals are less important than the vision uh but they're still going to be pretty important if you want to make good measurable progress over time if that makes sense i don't know if that yeah. answers the question yeah but yeah 100 yeah 100 100 100 i think it's really interesting um i think it's again favorite favorite saying it depends like i've got a lot of clients that are motivated by say the vision is right i want to get better at golf obviously we know that's not specific enough and we'd break that down into separate goals that they might work with the coach da, 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 da. those little steps that potentially are the goals that are the targets a lot of people like to see the progress ticking towards that 
that end goal, right? Definitely. I've got other clients that are completely the opposite, and they say, look, let's say the vision is I want to be able to play three rounds a week, maybe. They not they, they don't care about the little ones. Oh, they say, you, look, you keep track of everything. As long as you're looking after that and we know we're progressing forward, I just want to be able to do this. And they, they don't need the kind of motivation of, right, I've done this, now we're on to the next one. So it's an interesting one, different people's kind of psyches and where they stand on on that and it, it just depends on different motivations if, if it's kind of if you're intrin- intrinsically motivated or p- perhaps you need those other kind of external things to say right i've done this now we're onto this yeah and i think that's yeah uh, you, you hit the nail on the head yeah when you said that some people need it and some people don't need it because i do believe that some people find it much easier to to see a vision look i think we're using the vision words quite well like for example i want to become a scratch golfer for someone might say that then they might see signs of them getting closer towards that vision from the actions that they're then taking. And that might be enough for them. It might be that some days are not as good as others, but it might be that as long as they can in general see themselves moving closer towards that vision, they stay motivated, they stay yeah. uh, you know, driven on, on what they need to do and they continue to make progress. Where for other people, they find it very difficult because that vision seems quite scary. And it seems like, oh my yeah. God, I want to be a scratch golfer, but I've got no idea of how the hell I'm going to get anywhere near that, which is when the goals can be quite important then and then you say okay don't worry about that let's set the first goal as you know we're going to do this 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 and this 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 and i think what's most important of all of this all of this all of this all of this is obviously off the back of the goals we develop habits right like and this is the process that i go through with all of my clients and say what's the vision where are we trying to get to okay let's build some goals around that vision and let's work it in short term medium term long term all of that stuff and now what habits do we actually need to go away and deliver on on a daily, weekly, monthly basis yes. to make sure that we achieve these goals. And yeah. then suddenly you're like, okay, well, as long as I just do this every day and this every week, you know, three workouts, this practice, whatever, whatever, then eventually I will become a scratch golfer. And that's taking the stress away of this yeah. vision, if that makes sense. So um, yeah, that's kind of the process that I like to take all of my clients through. I go through all of it of, uh, you know, what's the vision, what's the goals, what are our habits? Uh, and then we basically just go and deliver on those habits. We just execute, execute, execute relentlessly on habits. Uh, we tick the goals off as we go, we reevaluate them, uh, and ultimately we just move closer and closer towards that vision every day, basically. So it's a really interesting, it's a really interesting way of saying that because what I'm kind of gathering is you're almost using those habits as the kind of breaking it down into smaller stepping stones, into kind of bite-sized things that, that, that are a lot more manageable, yeah. right? That, that's, that's essentially what you're saying, right? As long as you get this done every day, or this is once a week, twice a week, whatever that is, the person can go, right, Awesome. Joe's told me to do this. I know that if I do that, I can don't have to worry about this big ominous goal that might be seem like years and years and years away. I'm just worried about what I can control now. Hundred percent. And that, from what I've worked, what, what I've seen with my clients, actually means you're going to stick to those things much more because they know it's realistic. Yeah, and it's, it's probably it, the number right? one thing with goals. Yeah, yeah. It's making it realistic and not daunting. Exactly. Um, it doesn't seem like such such a big stepping stone that's just miles and miles and miles away. Exactly. Like, so it's interesting you using the word habits there to kind of break that down. I, I really like that. Yeah, I think like, a really good example because I can, I can. The reason I used this example is because it probably resonates. Well, one, it describes you know probably seventy five percent of the of the clients I have that I speak to, and it's probably going to resonate quite a lot with people listening to this podcast. The classic one I get is, I want to play off single figures. I want to lose a little bit of weight. I want to become a little bit stronger and improve my body shape. I want to hit the ball a little bit further. I want to play without pain, a little bit more mobile and just in general be healthier, happier and, you know, play golf for years and years, right? Probably sounds like a lot of yeah. people that you've worked with. Definitely sounds like a lot of people that I've worked oh, yeah. with. For sure, sounds like a lot of people listening to the podcast. And when you say that, it's quite scary because you're like, well, currently I'm, you know, got a desk job and I don't really practice much and I'm shooting in high in the high 80s, low 90s every week. And I just can't see how I'm going to become that person who is someone who is breaking 80 very regularly, healthy, happy, out of pain, mobile, strong, and lives a good life, right? You, it's, you, you seem very far away from that when you try and compare yourself. But when you then say, okay, well, what, what actually needs to happen for you to become a single big handicapper? What needs to happen for you to get a little bit stronger? What needs to happen for you to become a little bit more mobile, play with less pain, become a little bit healthier, lose a bit of weight? And then you can start to goal set off the back of those things, right? So you say, okay, yeah. let's just see if, how many greens we can start to hit. That might be the goal, right? The goal might be I'm going to try and hit 
seven greens around for the next whatever. It might be that we're going to try and get your strength to this point. We're going to set ourselves a goal for our strength. That's where we're going to get to. We're going to be able to do X amount of your body weight for this amount of repetitions on these exercises. And that might be your goal setting for there. You know, we're going to do these mobility tests and we're going to set ourselves a goal of being able to pass these tests by this date. Uh, and we're going to set this body weight target and that's going to be our goal that we're going to go out, right? Still seems quite scary. You know, like, oh shit, I've got all these things to do, all these t- targets to hit and I don't know how to get it. But we've said, okay, actually, all we're going to do now is you're going to do some really, really good practice for your goal twice a week. And here's the practice plan that you're going to deliver on, right? Yeah. Here's the gym plan you can deliver on. You're just going to get in the gym twice a week. Here are the workouts you're going to do. We've tracked your food and we know you're overeating a little bit. What we're going to do is take these, move these snacks around, move this, and you just need to deliver on this eating as best you can for as many days as you can each week. Here's a mobility work you can do, just five minutes in the evening. Off you go. Suddenly you're like, oh, yeah. oh that's all I need to do. Yeah, just do that like for a decent amount of time. And let's retract. And I bet you're much closer to those goals. Yeah. And you're probably yeah. going to be closer to your single player handicap as well. Then we reevaluate, go again. And actually, you, that target, that vision actually now becomes like, oh, all I need to do is this every day. And I'm going to get there. Yeah. It's, 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 it's one of my favorite sessions is revisiting goals and, and targets and things. And actually, kind of, you get that aha moment from clients being like, oh, yeah, like this, this actually made sense. Like, I've done it and now oh and now I can see the progress it's like yeah. it all seems so so small and it's quite easy and now I've actually done that two months a month down the line wherever you might be to step back and go oh, we've actually taken the first five steps towards where you want it to be yeah for, for a lot of people that don't set goals in in this specific way that just maybe have the vision I'd probably say it's not a vision it's more of a dream it's mm. more of a oh it'd be fantastic if I could play single finger golf be fantastic if I lost a little bit of weight or I could play more golf, whatever that may be. There's not actually putting in the steps, putting in the structure behind it, which is why you need to be held accountable. It's also why you said it there. You need to, you need to be able to track these things, right? Because you need to then look back, evaluate and say what's working, what's not working and kind of then be flexible within that plan. Cause it might be that we've set however many habits, however many smaller steps that we want to achieve and realize that some of them are maybe just a little bit unrealistic for where we are right now. And it yeah. might be a little bit too unmanageable. Yeah. And especially for kind of newer clients, what you want and what you do, what you want to avoid is, is not them feeling overwhelmed. You want them to really feel in control, really feel like it's not a massive step out of their lifestyle so they can stick to these things. And it then eventually it will get ingrained and become a habit. And then you can maybe add the other ones in, but without kind of tracking these things, um, being flexible it just becomes people will just give up it's the amount the amount of clients i've had over the year saying i wanted to do this i started it didn't track anything i've just just given up yeah and, and typically what i've what i've seen with like a lot of really successful clients in business as i always use a business analogy it's like you have a quarter well a monthly quarterly yearly three-year five-year plan for your business and you're expecting the same success outside of that. You're expecting the same with golf in your body. And you, you just can't. You need to have these things tracked, measured. You need to set these. And you need to be really specific with these things, visualize these things to, to make them achievable. Yeah, I, agree. I like what you said there as well about the the vision and the, and the dream or the fantasy, right? Because I think sometimes what, what helps people get deeper into this is if they say, you know, I will let's use the example of I want to be a scratch golfer or I want to shoot single figures. Sometimes it's nice to just say to them, okay, but just go a little bit deeper into that. Like, okay, create this vision a little bit. Create this vision. Make it a little bit more meaningful. Like, what clothes are you going to be wearing when you do that? What what clubs are you going to be using? What car are you going to be driving? What golf club are you going to do that at? What golf, you know, are you going to be a member? Are you not going to be a member? Who are you going to be playing with? And actually make it mean something. And then say to yourself, okay, well, what habits does that guy have? That guy who's doing that, what habits does he have? What does he do when he wakes up in the morning before he goes and plays golf? Does he have a good breakfast? Does he do a little bit of pre, pre-workout pre stuff? Does he do whatever? Or does he just rock up and throw shoes on and, and tee off on the first hole? Like what habits does that guy have that you can now take and use those habits? Yep. And what's he doing that you can't do that you need to go away and work out, you know, how you're going to start doing that, right? Yep. Um, yep. And that kind of leads from vision back to habits and obviously the goals are sandwiched within that, which I think yep. is... Yep. We, yeah, we, nice touched, we touched upon that really nicely when we when we spoke about the spoke about habits on the podcast and it is that it's visualizing what that person might be doing 
and then saying, right, well, what does it, what do I need to be doing to have that? Yeah. How, what habit do I need to be forming to create that? And it's then becomes relatively simple. I think the more, the more steps you can break your goals down into, it then makes things so much easier. The smaller you make it, the more manageable it is. Perfect. You can just do step by step by step by step by step. Yeah. And you said about writing it down, right? You said about making it a little bit more real. You can do the same with your habits. Just put your habits down, set yourself a goal for that month, whatever it is, stick your habits down and just tick them off as you go and then just rally at the end of the month. It doesn't need to be sophisticated or complex or, you know, fully deeply, you know, analyzed. You should sometimes just ticking these things off and committing yep. and, and actually executing on these things is enough for you to, to actually see progress over time. Um, and of course, there's going to be ways to optimize that. There's, of course, there's always going to be better ways of doing it. But in general, as you said, for the most successful businesses and people, consistency is unfortunately yeah. the answer for most of this stuff, right? If you're on the right path and if you've got the right vision, um, yeah. to execute on those goals. Yeah, um, it's, it's, the con- it's the consistency. But to create that consistency by, by actually writing them down however you want to do it as complex as simple as you want by actually then ticking them off you start to create some kind of positive reinforcement you start building some confidence to go oh i did actually do xyz i can do this i can stick to this and then and then it's just the power of time it's just that over over repeat 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 yeah um otherwise you're, you're probably doing more than you you think you are if you haven't broken them down into smaller goals and you haven't ticked all these things that you've done you're not going to get to the goal overnight anyway. So I've had it with people that a month in, two months in, they, then they just give up because I said that this was my goal. I'm not there now. Like it's really, really, um, really demotivating, right? By actually then having the steps and actually ticking them off, you know, perfect. I'm seeing some progress. I am, I am stepping forward. I am closer to my goal now than I was a month ago. Hundred percent. I think but the only way you get, the only way you get that is by actually ticking off these things. Agreed. Yeah, and I think what you said there about the. Uh... But the motivation is interesting because I guarantee the clients that you spoke about there, when they've hit their targets and they're happy or whatever, they probably want to set a new target now and push even more, right? And <laughs> yeah. this is the thing. Of, yeah. If you've got the vision, then a goal that when it's reached is not really the end point, right? Because you're still working towards this vision. And ideally, this vision always moves, right? You always want to be a little bit better than you are now. And that and really, we never really kind of reach that, that point. And if you have a goal only, then actually, once you reach that goal, you could easily say, well, I did that bored yep. now let's move on or i didn't do that uh, point there so i'll move on to something else whereas if your goals are based on these visions then i think the vision is always almost like your little star that you're following uh, and the goals are just your stepping stones to 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 that end point that will never come if that makes sense Bit con- yeah yeah 100 and, and we no 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 it completely makes sense and we, we almost spoke about this today with, with the with our with our business meeting it's almost having that point of kind of re-evaluating, step back, seeing what progress you have made, and then perhaps that goal changes, right? The vision, it might be similar, but it might you might readjust some little things on there. So then the goals might slightly change. So you're always, it's a never-ending cycle of kind of re-optimizing things and then changing your strategy for how you how you might get there. Um, which for a lot of clients, like this is it's really fun to do. Like it's yeah. really fun, especially if someone's like overturning their lifestyle completely, kind of, I've had so many conversations and see them, you see it in their eyes, them getting excited about this new life that they want to be living. It's like really, really motivating, which you just don't get if you say, oh, I just want to lose a little bit of weight. So why? Why? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I guarantee your vision is not that you want to be thinner. Vision, there's there's things deeper than that um, that can work. And there's definitely stuff that people can do listening to this that will hopefully get them through this process. I, I would definitely recommend everyone to go away and write down you know, we called it vision, but if you kind of basically say, okay, who do I want to be and what do I want to have? What stuff do I want? Who do I want to be? What do I want to be doing? Like really get into detail of that. Uh, and then come back, back off of that and say, okay, well, what do I need to do to get there? Do I need to lose a bit of weight? Do I need to hit more greens? Do I need to do whatever I need to do and set yourself some goals off the back of that and then go away and work out what habits you need to go and do on a daily, weekly, monthly basis to, to hit those goals. Um, and again, with that vision, like you said, there about losing weight, just ask yourself why and ask yourself why a yeah. few times, you know, yeah. I want to lose weight. The, why? Because I want to look a little bit better. Why? Well, because yeah. I've got on, on holiday and I want to look a bit better on the beach. Why? You know, like go deeper into it and really Break try and find down. out that reason. Because if you can find that vision and find that really deep meaning, uh, these goals are going to be so much easier for you to, to work towards and, and 
ultimately hit, right? Yeah, absolutely. You want you want to create that why to be as as strong as possible for you to really adhere to adhere to the work because it's it's not easy. You, it's a lot. It's a lot physically, mentally to kind of change your lifestyle to to perhaps have a drastic change in practice or going to the gym or or nutrition, whatever that change is you're trying to do. It's, it it can be hard work. So you want that why to be concrete you want to know every time that you're you're reminding yourself why you're doing it that's the motivating yeah. factor whether it's i want to play more golf and have a healthier back so I'm, i can still play with the kids the next day or like it's it's finding those deeper things that you can really really connect to and, and um commit to that yeah and you know this is maybe a little bit disheartening for a lot of people and maybe we'll go a little bit deep but also accepting the fact that you you will fail like ultimately no matter what goal you set yourself you probably will fail and that's okay like if you've got a vision like you know let's reverse engineer all the way back from what i said earlier like and you might give yourself the target of going to the gym twice a week you will fail there's no way you're going to go to the gym twice a week for the rest of your life it's not gonna happen you're gonna get sick you're gonna go on holiday something's gonna get in the way right so you almost need to accept that you're gonna fail and that's okay and you're basically just yeah. trying to work as close to that as you possibly can with all of your best effort and that's pretty much all you can do right like it's, it's it's really interesting you have to as as rigid as we're kind of making it out by setting these habits and things you have to have the flexibility around those to allow some failure yeah or if not all and failure to, right like there's not yeah. no matter what habit you set yourself you're not gonna do it for the rest of your life until you die so you're gonna no. that habit will lose at some point so what's your plan of action when you fail on that habit how quickly can you get back to doing it again when you get yeah. sick how yeah. quickly can you get back into your routine yeah, something yeah. gets in the way. You miss well, a workout. How quickly can you get back? Is that they're the they're the people that are the most successful with this stuff? Yeah, and it's oh, off the back of that. It's almost it's really worthwhile kind of prioritizing some non negotiables, right? Love like that. you said, for example, if you if you get sick, then what's the what's the one thing that you can do to try to get back into the routine as quickly as you can? What's the most important thing to you? Might not be the most um, meaningful or you might not see the most net benefit and positive from it but what's the thing you know that if you go right i just need to get back to their driving range or i just need to go for a, a 15 minute walk at lunch mm -hmm. then from then you're snowballing the positive effects again but it's yeah, it's having the flexibility and then prioritizing within that because you're right you're always going to have a step back life's going to get busy work's going to get busy you're going to go on holiday you're going to get ill there's always going to be things what's the priority then to then kickstart get back into it yeah and, and you get better at that the more that you do it so the more yeah. experience you have on doing this it's, it's a good question i ask my clients all the time is that when when things have been bad for example when they've um not or you know illness is a little bit different but let's say for example they get very busy or they get stressed with work or different things are happening i would say to them what's the first thing that goes so if you think of like, we generally work on main habits of you know, morning routine uh, you know, mobility, nutrition, strength training, golf, you know, you could probably put things in those categories. I would generally say to them, what's the first thing that goes? And for some people, it's the nutrition, right? Some people, when they get stressed, the nutrition is the first thing that goes out the window. For other people, it's the morning routine. They spend more time in bed, they have lay-ins, they snooze the alarm, and that goes. For other people, it's workouts. For some people, it's the golf, and whatever that is. But what we generally see is once one goes, and I'm going to tap in a little bit habits here, but uh, once one goes, then the others start to, start to follow, and we kind of then accept that uh, we've had some failure but in the same way like you said there which how what comes back we can then look at it and think okay w which one can i bring back in the easiest so the last one to go is generally our easiest one to, to bring back in so for people that are absolutely golf obsessed the golf might be the last thing that goes okay well how quickly can i just get back into as you said going back to the driving range or do a little bit or for those of you the people that are really really good with their nutrition you say okay how do i just get up tomorrow and just make sure i have a good breakfast i just start that again and then build off that habit and then get back um and again that's not a failure of your goal it's just a realization that nothing's going to be perfect and i'm just going to keep yeah. working towards that goal and then keep working towards that vision as best i can in the time that i'm in at the moment 100%, and that's why they're 100%. important right if you don't have that goal it's very hard to actually motivate yourself to get back to it like for what yeah what yeah exactly why, why? yeah it's going it's going back to that yeah. why again it's going back to that why um getting better at golf is is lovely we all want to get better at golf but it's it's re is it realistic is it is it practical are you putting in the steps to it like how you how you how you actually gonna how you gonna do it um 
with client syndrome, how often would you potentially talk about this stuff? I suppose it's it's a slightly more long term thing, or are there there may be slightly smaller goals that you're kind of checking in with, maybe weekly, bi weekly. How, how how do you normally structure things working with working with your clients? Yeah, it's a good question. I've I've actually changed this a lot over the years. Um, and I've kind of settled on a way that I like to do it now where I, I kind of don't really set any goals for at least the first month. Um, mm. And the reason being is I like to do this vision piece first and I like to do the vision and then I like to reverse engineer back to some habits. Um, and then within there, there'll be some overarching goals of, for example, getting stronger or getting uh more mobile or doing well, which, you know, they're kind of goals, but they're not very specific with, you know, with measurement. Um, but I like to the, f- for the first month, just to get some habits in place and get people actually starting to deliver on some habits from that. Then I'll set some more specific goals. Say, right, we've delivered on for a month of these habits. You know, you've been doing a little bit of mobility. You've been doing a little bit of strength. Let's set yourself a target now. And let's say, right, can we get to this amount of strength or can we get to this level of whatever and actually give them then something that they can work towards. Now they know that that habit is actually manageable for them. If that makes sense. So suddenly then that goal is like, actually, yeah, I've been doing that. And if I push myself, I can actually get to that, that point rather than starting from fresh. And you're like, okay, I want you to be there by next month, but they don't even know if they can even, they've even got the time to do that or yet, or, you know, where's my gym card or where's my, whatever. There's all these things that get in the way early on. Um, but I think yeah. if you can just put like a bit of a focus on habits to start with, uh, and then I like to bring the more specific goals in after about a month, but I didn't used to do that. I used to go, you know, probably 18 months ago, I'll probably go straight in with, with straight goals, up. but yeah. I've just seen, yeah, I've just seen a lot of improvement in people's first kind of like, you know, we spoke on before we come on about enjoying working with people within the first few months of, of working with them. And I've just seen a, a better engagement long-term when I've gone slower into the actual goal setting and, and worked more and habits yeah. to start with. But yeah. What, yeah. what about yourself? Cause I know this is probably a little bit more, is it a little bit more needed with maybe the one-to-one coaching direct that you do in terms of weight lifted and, and more gym based targets, would you it's, say? It's, yes. And yes. And no, I'd say it, I've got varying factors and uh, that depend for clients, I would say. So like there's, there's a few, few of my clients that are really motivated by say weight lifted right um i then might have to point out to them well actually right you have lifted this weight but we've le- lost track of some other habits and we might not be living the healthiest lifestyle or actually looking the best right now so it, 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 it i hate saying it but it depends on their goals and what's important to them mm. um I think we work really similarly in the fact that actually like the most important things are setting those habits and getting them doing those. And I typically off the back of first kind of introductions, I will kind of already know the goals that I want them to be heading to. So those habits that we're talking about, it's it's like you said, are already stepping stones in there without the actual pressure of saying, setting a a trackable target for them. Yeah. Like it's it's a lot of it is just is just getting the ball rolling, but I already know where I want them to be heading, and it's kind of pushing them in that direction anyway. Um, it's like you said, it, it can be quite daunting for you to to have a chat with a coach and then to say right straight away, I want you doing twelve thousand steps a day. You're going to go to the gym three times a week. You're going to chest press this. I want you to go to the range this many hours. Practice. Da, 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 da. It's like whoa, 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 whoa. Like especially for guys that have just started, they've potentially not been doing a lot at all. So for you to go do that, it's just way, 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 yeah. way, way, way too much. Um, there have been clients that have been kind of following a vague sort of plan and have kind of got an idea of where they're going, but it's just not structured at all. So for those people, I'll say, right, well, actually, we need the opposite. We need as many kind of structured targets as possible to, to make you mm-hmm. stay on track. These are potentially clients that get bored of – certain diets or board of training phases or board of certain types of practice and and that's typically because they're not seeing the results that they want and that's because they're not tracking these things so actually then by putting in more measures and actually them ticking off their things and going right this works i know this training plan works i know that do it by doing this many steps a day or following this plan eating these calories hitting these protein targets this morning routine i can see this is working that's actually can be more beneficial as setting more more trackable targets yeah. Um, 
it really it really depends on the psyche of the client i would say with with how i approach that yeah 100 percent uh couldn't agree more and actually i think um the best place for you know when you said they're about giving to people too much i think the best place to have someone when you first start working with them is them actually almost looking at you being like is that it like is that is that, yeah. is that all i'm doing and like yeah that's if they're in that mindset you've got them where you want them because because now they're going to come back they're going to want to do more and more and more and more i've got a couple of clients recently that i've taken on that are exactly in this position of they're what mm. edging to do more and you're almost just holding them back and then just drip freedom little bits here and there but their motivation to do more is then just skyrocketed and i think you know this is one thing we've not spoken about with with goals is they can be very very useful for for motivation like you said and yeah i think some people can work without them some people are very motivated to just keep delivering on their vision and just you know just keep plodding away and they just de- de- develop habits you know there'll be people that just go to the gym five days a week and never actually get any better but they just keep going uh they're the classic ones where they've got the motivation but they don't have the the goal as such um yep. where a lot of people are so goal driven that they have to have that thing to work towards otherwise it's very very hard for them to to actually get up and, and deliver on any habit at all really um, yeah so a little, so little side note where 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 would you say you fall within that joe uh i am not great with goal setting for myself at all um mm-hmm. i am much better with visions um and then yeah maybe this carries across into my coaching as well because it's i've seen it better on myself um i've i i'm way better with vision in terms of understanding exactly what type of person i want to be what i want to achieve what i want to have you know both golf fitness lifestyle everything uh and then i basically just deliver on habits um from those visions as best i can i i think i've I've always struggled with goals to um to commit to something that i really want to measure that that deeply i'm not that interested in the specific as such like uh i do a little bit of golf tracking now but i don't really have a goal necessarily that i'm trying to really really achieve i have a vision for my golf and where i want to be as a golfer and i know what habits i need to deliver on regularly to do that um but i just i kind of skip the the goal setting part um just simply because i know that i'm motivated only by the vision and the habits that's fine for me so i can just deliver on those habits every week and i don't need a goal to work towards for that if that makes sense but um yeah 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 yeah, yeah, so you understand the part i think you said there about the psyche i think 100 it depends like i know that's fine for me but I know that won't be fine for a lot of clients that I work with. And it's well, yeah, I yeah, just want to touch on you know that that doesn't affect your motivation because you know that. Yeah, and if, the and if it ever does, then I know that I say, you know what, I need to yeah. actually put myself down. And yeah. actually, maybe that goal is simple as, you know, set myself a target for the habits, even like even to a point, right? Yes, yeah. For yeah. the next yeah. four weeks, I'm going to get to the gym three times a week. That would be my goal, yeah. maybe. Like that kind of is a goal still. Um, yeah. And I will deliver on the, I, and this is the plan I will deliver. And, you know, I'll be stronger by the end of it, right? Like that, maybe that would be the goal that I set myself if I saw myself starting to slack on the habits, if that makes sense. And I'll review that every month or now and again. And yeah. generally every year I sit down and I do some kind of goal setting for the year. Um, but year is such a long time. And <laughs> <laughs> what I read last year is probably meaning, meaningless now. Everything changes, you know. I didn't think we'd have an app. Now we've got an app this year. That wasn't a goal. Yep. It just happened. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, completely, completely changed. Yeah. I was reading through some of my some of my goals. I, I typically do quite a bit. I do kind of half year, but I always use end of August going into September as a little bit of a a little bit of a kickstart, a little bit of a look at things and kind of evaluate where I am and stuff. And it was yeah, like my stuff was was completely different to, to where we are right now with yep. the business and everything like that. Yeah. Um, interesting. Going off the back of that, I'm I'm really similar to you with a lot of lifestyle things i'd say the only thing i'm different is my training is a lot more specific Mm. i'd like to set quite a few goals training wise um whether that's club head speed well these are the things club head speeds certain lifts that i change kind of every every quarter um because i just like challenging myself with different movements um but i'm normally quite specific with what with those there everything else motivation wise kind of habits look after themselves yeah and that's probably something that i need because i would say that for me the training is over the last 10 years or so has probably slowly declined on my priority list like i used to you know training used to be like the number one thing that i would you know i'd never miss anything that training everything was built around my training yeah and slowly over the last 10 years or so that's that's declined 
And, you know, maybe now I need that. Maybe I, maybe now I would need to set some goals and to push on that side. Yeah. Um, but my motivation to do that, to even set the goals at the moment is quite low because again, it's not really that high on my priority list. I still train two, three times a week. And when I'm there, I kind of push myself and I don't really need a specific target for that because I kind of just doing enough if that makes sense yeah. um yeah, yeah and that's well, some you know this is a, a, a typical state that people can sit in when they don't have goals really they can just sit in this kind of middle zone where you're like hmm, okay i'm not really getting worse but i'm probably not getting better you know i probably haven't got yeah. stronger over the last six months you know I probably haven't improved my physique over the last six months and maybe if i had a specific goal maybe i would do that but that would require me having discipline to, to, to deliver on that and other things would probably have to be and, and also but also th- also the why at the moment yeah. that's, that's not a why it's yeah. not an important so because it would only yeah. be for you know ath- athletically i can kind of do what yeah. i want to do so it's there not stopping me being able to deliver on anything athletically so yeah it's not really causing me it's not holding me back from doing what i want to do so it's probably not too much of a yeah. problem um yeah yeah it's, it's an interesting point Inter- very interesting point. moving on to, to the last point i kind of wanted to talk about today is um it's very easy for our clients they have coaches to hold them mm. accountable, right? Yeah. How important do you think accountability is? And perhaps what are some strategies you might recommend for people that don't have coaches or, or don't have a, a trainer or whoever to kind of keep them on the keep them on the path that they need to be heading in? Yeah, I think it's huge. I think accountability yeah. is if you try and do this stuff on your own, it's hard. Like if you try and do any if you try and change any habit on your own, it's very, very difficult. Um if you're in a relationship, it's very, very difficult. If you've got a family, it's very, very difficult uh, to, to do it on your own. However, if you are in a relationship and you have a family and you have people around you that whatever, um, it can be very useful. It can be very, very useful to to lean on them for accountability. And it doesn't mean that they need to do the same thing as you're doing. It just means you need to vocalize it to them and say, oh, by the way, I'm now going to be doing 10 minutes every night mobility. Great. Because that one day that you can't be bothered, they say, oh, wait. I thought you were doing yeah. 10 minutes mobility. We didn't see you last night. What's going on, right? And if someone's, you know, if someone's expecting you to be delivering on that habit, you've vocalized it, you've said it, and you're going to try and deliver. Uh, and that feeling yeah. of not wanting to let other people down, I think is way more powerful than that feeling of letting yourself down. So yeah, in general, you don't want to let other people down. You're more than happy to let yourself down. And I think if we can, uh, it takes a hell of a lot of motivation and, and grit and all of that stuff that we spoke about before on habits, it takes a hell of a lot of that to deliver on a, on a new habit or a, or a goal if you haven't vocalized it and yeah. somehow made you accountable to, to someone else. So yeah. that makes sense. It's, it's where I think, um, and I'm not the, the biggest fan of them, but it's where I think certain challenges do really well because it's providing that form of accountability from, from a peer group, whoever it might be to, to really hold you down to, to what you've said. You've said, right, I want to go to the gym twice a week. You, Maybe it's a group of friends and you all commit to the same sort of things for what, for whatever reasons, like posting in a group going, perfect, done, gym, day one, tick. Yeah. That's all it is. You set up a different WhatsApp group, like finding a, a support group is really important, I'd say, for, for goal setting. And, and I know we've kind of ventured off in, into habits, but what's interesting is we're kind of seeing habits and goals as fairly similar things. Yeah. Um it's having the vision that then you're going to set them from there. But the accountability from other people, I'd say, is is really, really, really important. Yeah, I mean, the best example of this is the Golf Fitness School. And when I see it, I, I always say to people at the start of the Golf Fitness School, when we, when we have our first call, I say, you can believe me or not believe me, but coming on these calls and integrating themselves into, we, have a, we generally run a WhatsApp group with it and then we have a call every week. The people that come on the calls and the people that, get engaged in the whatsapp group have the, the best results successful. by far yeah like by far yeah. so i said to them like don't overthink it just come to the calls and integrate into the whatsapp group and you will be one of the people yeah. that get the best results don't worry about anything yeah. else and the reason is because they're engaged in it they're constantly it's on their mind they don't want to let anyone else down they want to come on the call and they want to tell people what they did or what they didn't do and they, they let people down the people that go away and do it quietly fail i lose them yeah. every time yeah. every time yeah there's not been a single person that's drifted away not come on a single call not integrated themselves into the group and then comes on for the final call and was like, oh, I lost all this weight and I did all these gym sessions. Never happens. They drift There's away. made more progress than the ones yeah. that have. They're been. on their own and they fail. They drop off and they give up and they give up because they didn't have the support of the group and they didn't have the support yeah. of people around them. Um, 
and it's a shame but that's how it is um it's, it's, it's hard like these things are these things are hard to do by yourself it's hard to to sit down by yourself and actually set these boring specific measurable achievable goals and then actually deliver on them without anyone checking on you yeah because it's more fun to just sit down and watch tv right like that is more enjoyable yeah. for people so without yeah. this vision is you're gonna say why the hell am i gonna now roll around on a lacrosse ball and do like go to the gym like i could just sit in front of the tv and just chill out like that's the vision that's why the vision is so important in my eyes because the goal without the vision is um yeah i don't know if it's worth the paper it's written on how many people have set goals and not done anything towards them for the next month constantly new year's resolutions best yeah. example ever right yeah absolutely they're just written out willing nearly <laughs> on a they're just written out with no substance behind them uh no vision no overall goal of what you're trying to achieve who you want to be and ultimately you don't really care about them and then you don't deliver on them because you're not no, bothered no no 100 and that's yeah. okay yeah you're not that bad and if you were bothered you'd probably be doing them in the first place so then to create that change you, you need a massive overhaul to to really deliver to those to those things yeah i think there's a you know we can go and hold on thing on why people succeed and why people fail we've seen it you know maybe that'd be a good podcast for us to do in the future because we've seen it we've seen the traits that people that succeed have we've seen the traits that people that fail have uh we probably can help a lot of people understand those traits in themselves and you know share some of the tactics we've used to help people get from one to the other really because that's kind of what we yeah. do right yeah, we basically yeah, take no, people no, who no. are currently not where they want to be or achieving what they want to do or having the habits they want to do and we take them and we turn them into someone who does do those yeah. things that's pretty much our job yeah um <laughs> pretty through much, motivation accountability yeah. and knowledge that's pretty much what we do more, yeah all these things 100 yeah. percent. to provide these structures is is invaluable and it's it's like i, I wanted to do today because i think it's some really positive stuff comes out of setting goals and actually then send seeing people achieve them like it's it can be really amazing seeing people transform transform their lives just from a simple conversation yep just little little things that end up to a massive 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 big change over over a month six months a year two years three years that that's the real real change that we see and it's what we talk about tons with our philosophy at macro that is this holistic approach it's not a six pack in six weeks or anything like this it's the longer picture the longevity behind it yeah couldn't agree more awesome 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 right guys so we are taking a little bit of a break in the next couple of weeks joe is off on holiday yeah. fully deserved he's been working working his ass off the last couple of months it's been crazy <laughs> so i'm very jealous that you're going to be jetted off and enjoying the sun yeah, much needed, uh, much needed. But we've, we've got some good ideas for when we come back. So uh, we're planning on introducing guests. Uh, we've had one yep. guest so far, uh, Dave, who come on, and that was a great experience for us and worked as a good good test for us for how we could uh, potentially have some guests on the show. Um, so we will be bringing some guests in. We've got some good ideas how we would work with those guests as well because I've listened to a lot of podcasts in the cars, but sometimes you get the guest on, but you know the guest isn't necessarily in in the realm of what the podcast is based on. Uh, and it kind of ends up just being a podcast about what, what they do, um, which probably isn't why people listen to our podcast, right? They could get that from other places. So I think we've had some ideas on how we would kind of tailor those conversations around what we do and what the guest does or what their specialty yeah. is or their experience and uh, really try and get some merging going on across sectors. That's what I would love to do to kind of see, you know, for example, if we get a golf psychologist come on, you know, how does golf psychology and fitness merge what's the connections there how can these people you know what habit crossovers are there what how, how do these things work and what what application and yeah one of the things i've loved about this the series that we've done now is we've really really tried and i think i think we've succeeded in doing it is making it as applicable as possible like really trying to say like these are the actual actions that you can go away and take yeah. off the back of this um without you know leaving guesswork or cryptic clues and you know you get the real answers by coming and working with us no, this is what you can do, right? Like these are the actual actions you can go away and deliver. I'm pretty sure you even at one point delivered a whole like strength training plan to someone like on this podcast. Like you were talking about the strength training section. I'm pretty sure you listed out a whole workout someone could do. Like probably how much value probably. do you want from this? Like, yeah. Um, so yeah, that's uh, that's what I'm looking forward to doing in the 
yeah it'd be re- it'd be really nice um, and if you guys have any suggestions of if maybe specific guests or, or specific genres that you want us to get on from 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 different expertise in their field be, be more than welcome like we said we've got a, we've got an idea of where we, of who we want to try and, and get on and some different some different topics which i think would be really really valuable for you guys and, and for both of us is what i'm really looking forward to get some guests on is always always learning ourselves actually and seeing if we can tweak anything that that we're doing ourselves um joe where can they find you yeah, if you want to get in touch, uh, it's going to be Joe underscore macro golf on Instagram. It's going to be best. Um, and actually, if you said that for anyone's suggestions or if anyone's listening to this and wants to come on also. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. We could potentially do some little guests, um, listener, listener sections and different things like that. It'd be really interesting to hear different people's um how they've um, kind of their journey through from fitness and golf and what's helped, what hasn't helped. That'd be, that'd be really interesting as well. Yeah, so whether, yeah. You're a, yeah. whether you're a coach in a field that could be interesting, or if you're someone who's gone through a journey on their own, you know, that might be quite fun. And we can talk about uh, potentially getting some people on to discuss in detail. Yeah, that'd be really interesting. That'd be really interesting. Um, that, any suggestions you send them over? Them I am... You? sam underscore macro golf on instagram that's the best place and yeah guys if you like this episode give us a like give us a rating wherever you listen because that would be absolutely great for us we'd really appreciate it and um yeah we'll catch you on the next one